There's no doubt that you've probably seen adverts from coaches and influencers online or on social media that focus on persuading you to buy their courses, sign up to their stuff or follow them by flaunting their successful lifestyle. However, the true effectiveness of this tactic is questionable. And in today's episode, we're going to understand what it truly takes to get better conversions from video marketing and the role an emotional connection plays when trying to attract followers and clients. To do this, we are joined by Orlando J. Gomez, the founder of video production company Stellar Lens Productions. He's a video strategy expert specializing in visual storytelling for businesses and has worked with companies like Uber, Baskin Robbins, Dove, and Samsung, as well as hundreds of other small businesses across America. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. First of all, thanks for having me here. Really excited to chat with you. But yeah, so Stellar Lens Productions, man, that this whole thing this whole journey this video journey started when i was just a kid i always tell people i learned really really early that i was not cut out for sports i was not built for it so i had to find my my way elsewhere which is funny because my my family they're all very athletic people so i i fell into arts and you know acting and then eventually in, into video and I, I just carried that through uh high school started doing a lot more started uh that's when skateboarding was kind of making its resurgence in the early 2000s and um, was out there. I can, again, not athletic. I couldn't skate, but I had a camera and I could uh, film the guys who, who could. So I started doing that, that led into, you know, doing small client work. And then after, right after I graduated high school, started the business and uh, never looked back. That's awesome. I, I love that story because so many people go through life, not really knowing what they want to do, uh, they can go into university just picking something mm-hmm. because maybe that's the thing to do. But it's so fantastic that this passion of yours captured you at such an early age and it's just kind of flourished throughout your life. So that's a wonderful like little backstory of the company there. I really like that. Absolutely. Now, I think all of our listeners can relate to the fact, or at least that having some experience of seeing ads from coaches and influencers that focus on persuading people by creating a desire for their success and lifestyle. Now, given your experience uh, working in video production, what are your thoughts on this as a tactic for gaining followers and clients? Yeah, so it's interesting because there there is definitely a time and a place for that. There's not a whole lot of really hard, fast rules when it comes to uh, video marketing, just in video production in general. But I, I do think that that you have a much narrow narrower window of opportunity and success when you're when you're doing that because you have to find somebody who is already ready to buy so to speak right like they they need that exact thing that exact lifestyle that you're pitching and they can identify the problem in their life that's preventing that and you have to be specifically saying that is the the problem you're going to solve or overcome and then they're going to have this dream life after the fact so if you don't have a problem with lots of people coming to you already and you're just you're needing a sales tool more you know so to speak to just give them that final push then yeah great lifestyle is is going to is going to be a great way to sell because it's you're you're painting the picture of what life's going to be like after the fact when they already know that that's the lifestyle that they want to have but i i would say for the vast majority of the the clients i work with that's not really their their target, right? They're 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 trying to drive traffic. They're trying to reach more people. They're trying to um, kind of get in their headspace and and just be on their mind when they're ready to buy or when they start considering their product or service. So I, I think it just it just depends on what your purpose is and what you're hoping your outcomes are going to be. But generally speaking, I don't I don't really recommend the lifestyle approach anymore. Yeah, I can understand that. Also, personally, for me, from my perspective, I mean, I know there are people out there that love this sort of thing, but I find the idea of someone presenting their entire life on social media or wherever it is uh, so overwhelming. That must be so tough. Like, it's almost like you can't live your life. You just have to always be thinking about, like, how you're going to present every moment. I mean, like I said, there are people out there that thrive off that, but I I feel like that's like a personal prison to live in of constantly needing to... (laughs) You present your life to the world. Absolutely. And, and it's funny because I'm a content creator. I'm a video guy. You'd think that I crush it in that department in social media. And and I don't. I, I hate it. I hate being forced to feel like I'm I'm always working. And it's funny because we'll go on vacations, we'll do things, and and I'll still capture stuff on you know on my phone and uh in all the correct social media algorithm loving ways, but I'll never post them. 
it's just too much. It's too much work. And for me, it's like, it's not important enough. It's not really my brand to share every little bit about my life. So yeah, I, I can't fathom having to do that day in and day out in order to stay in business. Like that's just, I couldn't do it. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mean both. I feel exactly the same way. I mean, I love content creation, obviously a podcast host myself and so involved in the world of podcasting. But like, yeah, like you said, just there's something about social media that I feel like, I don't know, it's just different, it exists differently. But mm -hmm. I would love to know, like, so we spoke there, like, that doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So if our right. listeners are listening, and um, they're thinking, well, I, I need to know what works for me, like, how can entrepreneurs and business owners in our audience figure out the messaging that their audience is looking for in order to get better conversions from video marketing? Absolutely. So there, there is a bit of a translation that happens between your, you know, your written copy, your uh, brand position and so on, and then what makes it to video. So, so there is a little bit of, of, of a nuance that has to happen there just in the way information is conveyed and, and through video and, and that medium. But really the main thing that, that I always highly emphasize is making an emotional connection, peeling on an emotional level and really focusing less on yourself your business, your product. I always tell people like, don't talk about how you have the best product, the best service, the best price, because those kinds of things, for one, everybody says that, but two, your customer kind of assumes that, or they're expecting that. They, if you, if you don't have a good product, if you don't have competitive pricing, if you're not a good person with good customer service skills, you're not going to be in business. So we shouldn't talk about the given. At the end of the day, two things are happening. One, your customer wants to know that you can actually do the thing that they need done, solve the problem they need solving. But two, there has to be a draw to you. Why you over the hundreds of other service providers in your industry, in your area? And so personally, I, I love doing that through, through comedy. Comedy is memorable. It sticks in your brain. It's shareable. It, it's a good way to create a brand awareness and, and filling out your, your form fills, et cetera. But it doesn't have to be that. You know, we also do dramatic things. We also do heartwarming things. But this idea of really focusing on a theme, focusing on an emotion, and then tying that back into, into your business. I think that's a really important point. And I like this emotional connection. To be honest, that's one of the things that uh, really stood out for me when I saw your work. I thought, you know what, this really hits the nail on the head for our show because we talk about the fusion of technology and psychology. So this emotional right. connection that you speak of is, uh, yeah, it's so fascinating to me. I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, but do you have any clients that come to mind which you've worked with that you could give an example of like when this kind of emotional connection uh, worked well? Yeah, absolutely. So as a general rule, I, I try to always push my clients in that direction one way or another, even when we're doing talking head type videos, right? You know, explainer videos or or, you know, meet the staff kind of videos, like we still try to find a way to get to this emotional level. But I think the biggest indicator, the biggest win that we've seen when we really leaned into it, I had this client that had a, an, an automotive shop, you know, car dealership, and I'd been doing work with him for a number of years. And we've done a bunch of different little small scale, your, your typical local car, car lot commercial type stuff. Um, and they were doing well, they're doing fine. So I went to him with this idea that I wanted to do a commercial where I told him, you know, you're not going to be in the video. Your staff's not going to be in the video. Your dealership's not going to be in the video. We're not, never going to see the exterior of the building. Your cars will be in there, but only in passing, in brief moments. And I really just want to focus on your customers, who they are and what they're about. And at, at that time, they were coming up on their 100-year anniversary, which is pretty awesome. And so it was really easy to kind of get into this idea of, you know, we've been around for a hundred years and, you know, it's a family run business and it started with, with grandpa and, you know, all that stuff. And I really wanted to not go down that road of talking about them to celebrate them. I wanted to talk about their customers because it's their customers that have kept them in business for a hundred years. Right. So I wrote this script where we see a guy writing a note and he puts it on the windshield of a car and then he walks away. And then we cut to a young lady coming out with her, with her family and she sees the card and she opens it up and she looks at it and she smiles, but we don't see what it is. And then we start seeing different people in different walks of life, having that same thing, you know, coming out, out of a coffee shop, getting out of work, et cetera. 
and they all see these cards. And then at the very end, we reveal that they're thank you cards. And the voiceover through that whole thing is explaining, you know, describing who these people are, you know, in very fanciful ways. And at the very end, it just says, thank you. Thank you for choosing us for a hundred years. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And, and this video just blew up. So it did really well. Obviously they started getting lots of calls, revenue increased. They're doing more sales. The video is getting shared, getting talked about. The owner tells me that everyone he bumps into is like, Hey, love, saw your video. Love that commercial. That That's fantastic. To the point where they've now been running it for four years and it's still converting for them. Like normally we don't run anything for them for more than six months, maybe a year. And they're still running this video. They'll, they'll do other ones at the same time, but that's like their primary go-to every year. And we just kind of like update graphics at the end with the different offers or whatever. But this, this video was so impactful that they don't want to go away from it. Like it just, it works. And, and it was just this total, you know, trust experiment on their part that I'm pitching in this idea that we're not going to see the family in this family owned business. We're not going to see the dealership. We're not going to talk about how they've been around for a hundred years explicitly. We're just going to talk about the customer and it worked. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. I can understand why that would really like, I think, pluck at the heartstrings of uh, those viewers because that is that I think that perfectly sums up that kind of emotional connection that you're going for. Uh, so thank you for sharing that um, case study. Absolutely. I would also be interested, like we, we've kind of touched upon this already a lot, but what are some of the key reasons might you think listeners not, might not be seeing the results they desire with video marketing? And what do you think they can do to fix this? Oh, man. Uh, so there's there's a number of things. But I think the, the first and, and the primary reason being is that it doesn't feel authentic. I think that's where that emotional aspect comes into play. The better story you can tell and the better um, you can make that emotional connection, the more genuine it feels, even even though to a certain extent it's not because it's, it's scripted, right? But it allows you an opportunity to be a lot more thoughtful and a lot more intentional about what you're saying. And you can still get to the same end result and you can still say the same thing that you're ultimately trying to say, but you're doing it in a way that that connects a little deeper. And so I think a lot, a lot of times we focus too much on, and I'll, I'll be honest, like we run into this all the time. Like it's, especially when, when you're a video person like me, it's really easy to get caught up in wanting it to look nice, right? Beautiful cinematography, you know, beautiful light rays and atmospheric and the slow-mo and, and just the aesthetic of it. And that's great. And you should want your video to have a high production value, but that's not going to be enough to sell, right? That's not going to be enough to be memorable and to stick with your customer. It has to have that deeper layer that you connect on a level that's beyond just, oh, that looks nice and pretty and shiny, right? Um, and I think that's one area where a lot of it is lost. And then the second area is in the writing itself. I talk about using comedy a lot and we, we really like that approach, but it's also really easy to be so focused on the comedy that you completely miss the point of why you're doing this in the first place or, or your, your jokes or comedy doesn't actually tie into an offer or a, a problem that you're solving and it's just comedy for comedy's sake. And then that doesn't necessarily work either or, or you know, drama for drama's sake, whatever, whatever it may be. So I think it's the combination of those two things. You still have to lead people to the right place, but you also need to connect with them pretty deeply. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I have to say, I think that people have a natural sense for understanding authenticity. I think when you come across as fake, like there's just a gut feeling. And I think yeah. there's, there's no way of like really faking that from my and, experience anyway. No, totally. And And I think one of the things too is your customer, people in general are very smart especially when it comes to consuming visual content. We're a very sophisticated species when it comes to the things we see and how we understand the information that's being conveyed through video. And now, talk psychology, man, we're going to go down a rabbit hole here. But one of the things that I'm also a big advocate for is you don't need to spoon feed your customer. You don't need to show every little moment. You don't need to be entirely explicit about what is going on or, or the message you're trying to convey, trust that your viewer is smart enough to understand that they, just as you came up with this idea, just as you were able to understand the concepts that you're putting out there, they can too. 
Yes, it may take a little more work because it's not coming from their mind, but they will get there. Trust them with that. And I think when you have that level of respect for the viewer, I think, again, that adds to the authenticity, that adds to trust, that adds to you're treating me like a human being. <laughs> you're not, I'm, I'm not a, a dumb little monkey here that needs to be spoon fed. There's something happens there. And, and, and again, coming back to connecting more deeply. And I think that happens too, when you're, you're not spoon feeding people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. And I also want to say like, in the sense of video platforms, like how can our listeners pick the right platforms for their videos? For example, we've touched on a few things here, like local TV, um, but like Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, like where can our, our listeners get the most eyes and return of investment for their videos? Yeah, I think that's going to depend on one, where your audience typically lives, who, you know, who your, your, your avatar is, who your, your, your primary ideal customer where they are, but also your, your budget, right? Broadcast media. That's what I grew up in. I love it. I will always advocate for making a TV commercial, but it's expensive. Um, not just the production, but the, the broadcast itself, the cost of, of advertisement. Social media is a great way to go. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, if you can handle it, I absolutely can't. It's, it's just, again, coming back to what we're talking about before, it's just, it's just too much work. The, the level of consistency that you need to have and uh, the regularity, uh, personally, that's that's just it's too much for me. But if you have that personality and you are willing to to put in that time, that can be a very profitable market. So it really just kind of comes down to what you can afford, where you think your customer lives, and what what spaces, what media do they consume, and what you're willing to do, and and how far you're willing to go to to reach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you said that with TikTok really stood out for me because. In a sense, you need that sustainability because if you're under pressure mm -hmm. to like constantly be posting, really, that's just a recipe for burnout and it's not going to be sustainable. 100%. Yeah. So that makes Absolutely. sense to me. So mm -hmm. in, in the beginning of all of this journey, I was originally, well, when, when YouTube first came out, I was making YouTube content and doing a lot of short films. And, and mm -hmm. at the time when YouTube first started, it was a little longer format content and, and it was more filmmaker friendly. But then over, over time, it became where you needed to do this if not daily, at least multiple times per week. And I realized that's just not going to happen, not with what I, I enjoy doing or, or what I have time to do. It just wasn't going to happen. So I quickly pulled away from that. Like YouTube was no longer going to be a place that I was going to create content for because it just, the demand was too high there. And so being aware of things like that, like how, how the platform prefers you to be, what it wants, the, the type of content, the duration, the frequency, things of that nature, that that's all very important too in selecting where you're going to be advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And um, really this is my last question for you. I, I'm just curious to know like what's on the horizon for you folks uh, there are Stellar Lens Productions. What are some priorities you're going to be focusing on in uh, the near future? Yeah. So my current focus right now is I've ne we've never had like a true niche, right? We, we've never really picked one specific thing that we wanted. I mean, to a certain extent, you could say it was the narrative storytelling aspect. That, that's kind of our, that is definitely our specialty, but it's not like industry specific. And so one of the things that I wanted to really focus on and, and kind of experiment with this year is creating just these different silos of very specific industries that we want to tackle and use very specific language for and kind of create models for what that looks like. So that way we can more easily target specific uh, businesses and show this is what this practically looks like for you and your industry. Because right now, like we're all over the place and we work with small businesses to huge corporations and like I said, talking heads, broadcast commercials, whatever it, we're all over the place. And so sometimes it's kind of hard to translate and get them to understand what we can do for them because all of our samples, all of our past works are so very different and, and not their industry. So I think really focusing on getting specific while still being open to doing all these other things is, is a new goal for me. But yeah, I, I think, but still not losing who we are, just kind of repositioning ourselves and trying to make things a little more clear for, for the customer. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, I hope that it's uh, 
a smooth transition for you folks. And I hope uh, 2023 proves to be a very prosperous year for you, you lot there. And uh, if people are listening and they're interested in working with you, uh, what are the places you, you'd like to send them to? How can they keep up with you personally? And um, yeah, what, what should they do to follow you folks at Stellar Lens Productions? Absolutely. So um, you can follow me personally on Instagram. That's usually where I do most of my uh, interactions there. Uh, it's Orlando J. Gomez is my handle there. We have one for the company as well, Stellar Lens Productions. Um, not as active there, as I mentioned before. It's just a little much. But I would say, you know, if you go to our website, stellarlensproductions.com slash brains, we actually created a, a landing page for your, your listeners. And we're actually going to be offering a free marketing assessment for your listeners. So um, they can go there, fill out the form, you know, let us know who they are. And we'll set up time to chat with them, kind of walk them through this whole process and kind of figuring out who they are, what their messaging should, should be, how they can approach video marketing going forward. And, and then we literally give them like this, we call it a, like a marketing playbook. Like it's just like, here's everything we've come up with based off of our, our conversation. And now go execute. So one little fun little tidbit, like I said, I started in video really young. Uh, I made my company really young. So the name is really dumb in that we spell uh, lens a little un unconventionally. So it's Stellar Lens, L-E-N-S-E. -E. Um, people always forget the E and they end up in nowhere land. Um, so L-E-N-S-E -E is lens because, yeah, early 2000s and I was young and I didn't know any better about not confusing people. I love that disclaimer. That's fine. Don't <laughs> worry. Oh, we, well, we're going to include all those links in the episode description. And thanks once again for tailoring Perfect. that for the listeners. And uh, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. I really hope that you folks are able to continue producing like entertaining, uh, heartwarming and hilarious content. Well, not even content, but adverts and videos uh, for, for all your, the clients you work with. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank That's you so much plan. for joining me. <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks for having me. Growing a company has many hurdles, from securing funding to expanding your business capabilities to ranking better on search. Each business challenge is uniquely complex. The solution to these challenges is growth-focused digital PR and marketing, and that is where our sponsor, Publicize, comes in. Publicize sets itself apart from traditional PR companies. It does not charge large retainers or churns out press releases whether you've got a newsworthy announcement or not. Publicize builds businesses' online presence and gets high-quality PR and media coverage for startups and entrepreneurs who are priced out of a broken PR industry. What's more, listeners of Brainspike Back can find the tools and resources they need to overcome common hurdles that many startups face when trying to generate long-term growth by visiting publicize.co slash bbb. That's publicize.co slash bbb. That is it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something. And if you have benefited from today's episode, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast as these reviews really help us grow the show. You can also follow us wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Just search Brain Spike back and you will find us. We hope you join us for more episodes in the future. And until then, take care.